Hi, Drew T. Jackson here with the Drew T. Jackson Coaching, Speaking, and Training podcast, where we bring small business owners and operators to you, where you can learn from them. And so I'm so excited today to have Sonny Lowe with me. He is the president and CEO of Blue Jean Networks. Sonny, go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Sonny Lowe from Blue Jean Networks in the downtown amazing offices of Blue Jean Networks. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let me go ahead and give just a short blurb on Blue Jean Networks real quick so everybody kind of has a frame of reference and then we'll get right into uh, some questions so we can learn from you. Um, Blue Jean Networks is committed to remarkable IT service to small and mid-sized businesses. Uh, they not only build great networks, but they also give 10% of their profits to charitable organizations and have sponsored the Fort Worth uh, Turkey Trot for four years now. They are on a fantastic growth curve uh, due to the people and the organizations surrounding the company. And I was looking at it, Sonny, you are celebrating 10 years this year, right? Yeah, it'll be in May. That is so exciting. So cool. And then in 2016, you were the small business, uh, won the small business of the year award. How yep. cool is that? With companies from one to 10 employees at that time. Yep. Yep. So companies one to 10 at that time. Um, uh, and then this year, you are a finalist for the 2018 uh, Fort Worth Inc. Uh, Entrepreneur of Excellence Awards. And uh, it's actually the award ceremony is going to be on the day that this, uh, this interview is, is going out in the, in the internet. And so, uh, so super exciting times there at Blue Jean Networks. Um, but the first question I've got to ask you is, where does the name come from? Blue Jean Networks, where, where does that come from? What does that mean? I have a great story about that. Um, when, when, I, when I left my former company that I was a partner in, mm -hmm. I just never wanted to wear a suit again. <laughs> and I needed a name that was fairly high in the alphabet. The internet was not that big of a deal at the time. And so I had to have a name that people could find in lists of names. And so I wanted to, so I thought, well, blue jeans, I like blue jeans, wear blue jean networks. But over time, uh, that became less of a reason and it became more of a, um, a branding and a marketing thing of, of um, think about everything that you like that's comfortable. It's always about blue jeans. Think about everybody that's hardworking for your company. Well, they're almost always in blue jeans. If you think about anybody that's ever built something or made something or done something creative, they do it in blue jeans. People who do that are the people that create the things and then maintain them as they go forward. They're the kind of people that you want to shake hands with and then do a job with. And that's the values that we bring to the table with Blue Jean Networks. Wow, that is awesome. I love, I love your thought process with that. And um, that, that's so cool. So cool. Thanks for sharing that, that story. And I guess another thought from that is uh, when you have the opportunity to start your own business, start your own business, right? I mean, you decided, hey, I, I'm not really interested in wearing a suit uh, day in, day out. I want to do something where I want to go to work every day and create an environment where I love to work there. And so what a great thought for a small business owner, someone going out and, and, and thinking that they might want to start out their business. Just great, great stuff. Um, okay, so 10 years, you started with, you know, you, you wanted to be comfortable, you wanted to communicate that comfort to, to uh, the people that you're serving. But now you, you're, you're, you hit eight years and you're winning this, this award uh, in 2016. Now you're at 10 years and you're, you're uh, one of, of a few finalists for another entrepreneur award. How did you get from there to here? Tell us about the journey and kind of what that looked like and, and, and what you felt along the way. I think for everybody who's an entrepreneur, there is a precipitating event in their life that puts them out on the path to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's pleasant, like, I bet I can do this, or, I, or some goal and vision on the horizon. Sometimes it's terrifying, like you've lost your job, or you think you can do it better than your boss, or you see your company going underneath, underneath you without you. In my case, there was a precipitating event in my former firm, uh, a great group of people, and um, they uh, encouraged me at some level that I needed to go out and do this on my own, that the way I wanted to do it was different than the way they wanted to do it. Hmm. 
Well, I stepped back from that and said, you know, they're right. I really can do it differently and I can do it better. But I'm sure they felt that if they'd really thought that I was 100% of a guy, they probably would have wanted to kept me, you know. <laughs> and, and so I looked at that and I said, well, gee, I know I can do this. I know I can do it better than we're doing it now. But I got to respect what they're saying and really hear the fact that um, I might not know everything. Wow. Okay. And so I learned from day one that I wanted to be the kind of entrepreneur that had a coach. So I went out and found a coaching company right off the bat when I started the company. Wow. I worked with a coach who's now up in uh, mid cities up actually he's up in grapevine now. Okay. Uh, great guy. And he had a franchise coaching uh, company back then called the growth coach. Okay. And he, they would take you through a once a month thing of different things you needed to do in your company, one month on culture, one month on invoicing, one month on different things, all the way through that stuff, helping you get your goals in place and build a business plan and get your structure in place and basically educating me a lot further than I had been that to that point before. In my former company, I had gone through Fast Track. I don't know if you're aware of that organization, but Fast Track is something that the Kauffman Foundation puts together, okay. and it is run out of the Chamber of Commerce and out of the Small Business Development Center here in Fort Worth. Oh, okay. It's a place where in 15 weeks, you can go through a master class on how to start a business. Wow. And they take you in 13 of 15 weeks, you go and they bring master entrepreneurs in each week to talk to you. On the marketing week, they bring a marketing expert in. On the accounting week, they bring an accounting expert in. And they teach you all these basics that you have no idea that you don't know. Well, that was my introduction 20 years ago. And then this coach began doing it. About a year into that, I came across a company called Heartland Technology Groups, okay. which is a peer group. And there's lots of different kinds of peer groups. You, if you think of peer groups, you think of EO or Vistage, or um, there's several in town. Uh, one of them in town is um, Valerie Riefen, Riefenstahl, uh, Riefenstahl's company, um, uh, Virtual Board. Okay. Uh, but this is one that's geared just for the IT business. Okay. And it's 300 of the top IT companies in the United States and now wow. around the world that get together every quarter and spend two days with, with each other a quarter and basically share all their financials, all their marketing, all their troubles, all the things that they're succeeding at, and then work with each other to be the a virtual board for each other in doing this. And then they had some brilliant leaders who were leading it, who had done IT companies before, who were pushing down books like Bob Berg's The Go-Giver and mm -hmm. uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins and giving us great li lists. And then they're also tying in service companies from around the country like Service Leadership in Dallas, which benchmarks 80,000 IT companies on a hundred different things in your chart of accounts and lets you know how you're comparing against your, your competitors in your particular specific branch of this to help you get to know your numbers. And over a period of about eight years, they drilled culture and, and uh, the numbers and moving the needle and taking risks and when to take risks and when not to take risks and, and holding, learning how to budget and all this stuff at levels that are beyond a master class into <laughs> us until at, at that point we were just stunned at how much we'd learned and from that became a very process oriented company about four or five mm -hmm. years ago we discovered um, the entrepreneurial operating system, eosworldwide.com. If you've yeah. never been there but read the books Traction or Get a Grip, or they have a couple of new books. One of them's called Rocket Fuel, and they have a new one. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of it right back, right off the back. That's Gino Wickman and his team up there. I'll put those links in the, in the thing below too. Yeah, those are great pro, uh, people to, to, to get. And they got a lot of downloadable resources there. And then books by um, guys like um, Vern Harnish, of Gazelles, gazelles.com, who is a fast growth company leader kind of a guy. Uh, Simon Sinek, uh, uh, First Start With Why, and, and his great book on leadership, which is um, 
Leaders, uh, eat, leaders, eat, leaders last. eat last. Yeah. Um, these kind of things are being pushed into us. And I, I just was stupid enough to think, well, I ought to do all of this stuff and read it and implement it. And I'm sort of a change junkie. So I would come back from these meetings and kind of blow my ha staff's hair back. And they would just kind of get, oh, crap, Sonny's coming back from ATP. <laughs> What's going to change now? But over the years, it became a place that was just a warm, inviting, safe place where we were growing our people and helping wow. them buy houses and, and helping them become more than they've ever been in their roles and jobs and giving them a chance to do things they've never done before. And then watching them blossom into just tremendous people and, and being able to move the needle in a lot of ways that I would have never thought they could. That is, so, so you would say personal growth has been a major part of your entrepreneurial journey then? Oh yeah, I don't remember who said this to me. I think it was uh, Arlen Sorensen, but he said a CEO has to be in his mind where the company is going to be in two years. Wow, wow, that's good. A CEO what that means has to is be your mind. reading yeah. has to be two years ahead of where you're going. Mm. If your company is going to have five more people in it in two years, you have to be the person today that leads those five people that aren't here yet. But you also have to be the person today who's absorbed the management levels that have to exist and the new teams that are going to have to be there and what education pieces are going to have to be there to build the leadership plan to develop your business plan. This is kind of, I don't know if, if this is even a fair question, but where do you think you would be? I mean, you just lined out a waterfall of information on classes you went through, trainings you went through over the last 20 years. Uh, let's well, just start. Over the last eight. Well, oh, so that's just over the last eight. The, yeah. yeah, what you were mentioning there. Where, do, you, do you think you would have the same kind of success if you hadn't if you, if you hadn't dug in and decided to – be a learner and, and kind of humble yourself, like you said, and say, I might not know everything. I, I need to figure this out. I've always been a learner. That's kind of one of the, that's probably the thing I do best that mm. I do. I learn things and then can teach them to other people and pass them on. But I think it was the gifts that other people gave me that the learner isn't the really the real Magna Carta in those situations. Okay. The great people that are talking to you and the great wisdom that you're getting, you can learn bad things, you know? Yeah. The, the idea is to find the geniuses and, and surround yourself with them. And in today's world with podcasts and, and uh, things like how I built this and, and Craig Groeschel's great podcast on leadership. Yeah and books that are available. Uh, we have a, a thing in our company that, that I've, I've implemented, which is we have a Kindle account, which has got all the books on, on the electronic books that, I, that I've learned about all the time. And I shared this account with everybody in the company on their phones so that they can, and I'll put my password in so they don't know my password, but they know my account and that stuff. And they can download any of the books that we already own as a team and wow. read them or listen to the podcast on Audible because it's all linked. Yeah. And so we're constantly feeding into them all these other geniuses that are not Sonny Lowe, but that, that are these other people that have let, fed into me and just changed the way that I view business. Yeah. Well, and something you said the other day while we were at lunch, you said, you said that you actually implemented what you learned. Yeah. And it wasn't just, you know, because so often we can go to a conference, we can get it jacked up, excited. You can read a book, you're pumped up. And then you put it on the shelf, the binder, the book, it collects dust. But you actually began implementing these things into your organization. And tell us how that, how, how that brought about change when you implemented it. If you think about it, this is a, another phrase from Arlen Sorensen. Um, he says, inspiration without execution is hallucination. Wow. And he put that over his door in his office. And I've thought about putting it over the door in my office many times. Yeah. Inspiration. If you have an idea and you can't figure out a way to execute on it, you're basically deluding yourself. Wow. So how are you going to handle that? And so I am not, I, I have to own this. I am not a follow through person. I am, there's nothing about me that's follow through. I'm ideas and I'm vision and I'm let's get here. And so 
many of the systems that we do, that we have around here as systems in our company are to enable this terrible implementer to become a better implementer. And so what I do is I hire people with tremendous follow through. Hmm. And then I sit down, put them on my management team and I throw up all over them and say, I've got all these nine ideas, which ones do you ought to think? And they look at me and say, okay, you get three ideas this quarter. That's all, all right. you get. And then they help me filter which ones we ought to do and then we implement them. But it's, it's kind of like the hedgehog principle in good to great where you start the wheel rolling and it's not a lot of additional energy that you're putting into it each time. But over time, as you're mo making that big flywheel or big merry-go-round move faster and faster and faster, you're not putting a ton into it, but it's gaining momentum just from each new little system that you add in until you look up one day and you're a powerful organization. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that is uh, great stuff. So, so, much, so many quotes in there. I'm going to have to re-listen to this over and over again to get, get all this good stuff. I'm telling you, Sonny, this is really, really good, what you've learned and how you've been able to share this and your passion for wanting to um, build your people. I think that is so huge. And any, any small business owner listening to the podcast, watching the, the video on YouTube, build your people and they'll build a business, you know? And, and and Sonny is demonstrating that. And not only that, uh, recognize the areas where uh, your strengths are, recognize where your weaknesses are, and then hire your weaknesses. And, and allow people to flow in their gifting and their strengths. And that's really what I'm hearing is that that's been a major um, hallmark to your leadership and your success with your business at Bougie Networks. It, it's definitely a teach and release methodology. Mm. Um, a friend of mine a long time ago said something that stuck in my head. I don't remember who this was, but he said, it's better to uh, train a person and have them leave than not train them and have them stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I really like that. Right. But, but now it's more about um, the, the four plans that I've got in my life. And anybody who's been around me for a while thinks about the four plans because I've talked about them before. Okay. But it's your legacy plan, which is all the things you want to accomplish with your life. Mm. Your life plan, which is the part of that you're executing this year. And then there's the business plan, which is how you fund your life plan. Okay. And then there's your leadership plan, which is how you execute your, your, your business plan. Wow. Will you say those again real quick? So legacy plan, which is mm -hmm. where you want to end up, how to shut down your life, your goal list, all the big rocks that you want to have done, your bucket list, um, everything about what, how you want people to think about you in the end, the things you want to try to accomplish in your life, your legacy plan. Then your life plan, the piece of that that I'm executing this year. Okay. What bucket list items am I doing this year? What investments am I making in friends, in, in the community, in culture? Where am I moving the needle this year? Then your business plan, which, and this was an aha for me, you don't need a business plan bigger than your life plan. Okay. Because if your business plan can fund all of the things you're doing in your life plan, you have a big enough business plan. Okay. But another way of looking at that is if your business plan can effectively build your life plan, maybe you want to go out and look at your life plan because your life plan may not be big enough and it isn't <laughs> big enough because you haven't thought about your legacy plan yet. Wow. So if you've really got a list of things you want to accomplish, it should be bigger than what you can actually accomplish. Yeah. You should, you should be forced to prioritize in your life plan off the things you want to do in your, in your legacy plan then your business plan it requires it to be bigger than anything you ever thought because it's got to fund this incredible life. Right. Right. And now your leadership plan is how you teach your people to execute your business plan. So good. That is great. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to type that up and, and we'll, we'll be posting that with this. This is, that's good. Um, my goodness. Wow. We, we covered so much in that, um, with personal growth and everything. Let me ask you this. Was there a moment in this entrepreneurial small business owner journey where you thought to yourself, I think we got something going here. I think, I think we're going to do pretty good. We kind of got our niche. We've got, we're, we're moving that hedgehog thing where it hit. Was there a moment where you can, you kind of felt that? 
I think there are a lot of those little ones. I don't okay. have one that, that, I mean, winning the small business of the year was bigger for me than it was for anybody else. Nobody else really cares. <laughs> But, but, but for me, it was sort I thought of it was like really the cool. community <laughs> validating that I actually did something that was, you know, I got my grade and it was an A, Yeah. you know, but, but the, um, the, 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 there's lots of little ones. Okay. There was the first time I pulled out and was a partner in my own firm and was generating, was killing what I eat. That was a mm. big one. Yeah. And then we were profitable within three months when we started that company. Wow. And then pulling out of that company and doing it on my own. Um, I did have a partner at the time, but I bought him out after a year and I really appreciate him putting up with me for a year and doing that. Um, and um, he, that was an experience of killing what I ate. And it, we were profitable within three months at that point. Wow. But profitable meant, meant we were able to eat. Yeah. You know, it didn't mean that we really made a lot of money. Yeah. A few years after that, I was talking to the guys at service leadership and they pointed out to me that if you look at a particular uh, column of companies, like all the IT companies in town, 50% mm -hmm. of those companies are not profitable. Wow. I mean, they're making so little profits that they're, they'll be lucky if they're bringing 40 to $60,000 at home with all Golly. their efforts and trying and everything yeah. else. And and wow. doesn't matter how big they are, they're just making no profits. The next fifty percent, the 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 that that first twenty five percent above the fifty percent, we call it the third quartile. Mm -hmm. That group is making about nine percent off mm -hmm. of all their efforts, and nine percent is pretty good on an investment. Yeah, but it's not great on an entrepreneurial investment mm. because there's so much risk involved. Yeah. You don't know whether you're gonna go out of business. It's 9% on a good year, it's 1% on a bad year. Yeah. You know, so the average is nowhere 9%, it's just 9% this year, those third quarter companies. Then the next quartile, which starts about 17% and goes up to 30%, are making between 17 and 30% profit to the bottom line. Hmm. And they're not doing that because they are charging more higher, though they are, they're not doing it because they're more trained because they are, but, but that's not why. They're doing it because they have instituted real process-driven business methodologies yeah, and have yeah. become a mature process-driven group. That's Service so Leadership good. describes them in five levels of process. The first level one is sort of a, we don't know how we got here. We don't know how we're going to get out. Uh, and there's two kinds of companies in level one, in my opinion. One, these really dysfunctional companies that, that never have any process and are kind of product driven mm -hmm. toward, um, not necessarily like buying a printer, but product driven in the sense that they're, they're low margins and they, and they do everything. Everything is always a, a, a new thing every time they do it. They don't ever, they do, they do everything. It's kind of like one of those restaurants you go into that has a nine page menu. Yeah. And they try to be everything to everybody. Then there's this second group, group which is beginning to realize that they need processes. Yeah. And they're starting to do some. And there, and then you got group three, which is right in the middle, which has got processes and does them most of the time. Hmm. Okay, I mean, 80% of the time, they're doing their processes. And what you don't know is the group of three is twice as profitable as group one. Wow. Just the with, same size just, company. Yeah, just with getting 80%, just from not even 100%. Processes. Just from having processes. Yeah. They're 100% more profitable. And then you go up to group four and group four is a company that not only has its processes, it always does its processes. Mm. And if you don't, you get fired. <laughs> yeah. But it only does one thing. And if you want to do something outside their process, they don't do it. Mm. They reject you. And that's a group four. And then a group five is a, is a, is a group that not only does their thing and does it perfectly, but they've got, 50 other things mapped out that they also can do processes on if you need those too. And they wow. figure out what the other things that need to be done are and, they're, and they've got that fully processed out too. And so slip ring into that thing is not a big deal for them because they've got a process for it. 
Wow. Instead of just abandoning it, they've over the time figured out which ones are going to be the ones that really make you money. And they built the processes in those. And now they're really, really powerful. Yeah. I always tell owners, there are three things. Everybody wants to become more efficient. And so what they do is they go out and buy tools. They get Office 365 or they get dashboards or yeah. they get uh, a new printer or they get a big CNC milling machine, something, they get a tool and they, they put that expensive tool in place and they're still not <sighs> doing it. And so they're, they're not more efficient. And so they say, what we need is processes with our tools. And so they build processes around these tools and they build them and they put them down there and say, go at it. And their people don't follow the processes and they're mm -hmm. still inefficient. And then they say, you know, we got to get rid of these people that are not following the process. And they go and they, they get a hiring process in there and they hire the people that will follow the processes. And now they've got people and processes and tools and suddenly they become efficient. Wow. And it takes all three and it almost everybody goes through that progression. Wow. <laughs> that is, that's great. I mean, that's, that system process. I, I'm almost speechless here, son, because that's, I mean, that, that is last year, my last year, 2017 was defined by making that systems mindset, mindset shift and recognizing um, it's not a personality thing. It's something that if I want to go to the next level, I have to get this. I have to, I have to, it has to do with execution. You know, like the, 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 what you were talking about earlier, the quote earlier, you have to be able to execute and put things in place and have that shift in that mindset um, of processes, procedures, and uh, a way you do things so that you can get things automated so that you can bring people on and onboard them uh, efficiently. And so, that's, and you don't always have to develop them internally. Sometimes you can buy them. Yeah. I mean, you certainly don't have to develop an accounting department. You can rent an accountant. Yeah. Who's got processes and tools and, and, and procedures to make you efficient in that area. Yeah. And you can rent um, an IT department, like what we provide, to, to bring that, a huge amounts of process and procedure into your environment. Yeah. You can um, get a virtual... Um, operations officer or a CFO and, and have them look at your processes and say, well, I've already got these processes. We can apply them into your company in sort of a boilerplate, sort of like what EOS does, where it's a, it's a, it's a shadow box of processes that you plug your company into and you can use their processes and they have processes for how to build processes like mm. the, the, the simple three-step process builder and things like that. That, that allow you to develop these processes more quickly. You're not stuck having to reinvent the wheel. There's people out there that have already done it. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, look for the resources, find someone, find the source um, that you can, you can you know, get those systems put in place and, uh, and find a mentor like you did. Uh, well, we've had so much of your time. I, I, do, I just have a couple more questions. Sure. What, what are you excited about right now with uh, Blue Jean Networks? What's, what's going on in your world? What are you excited about? And uh, tell us about that. I'm excited this year that for the first time, we have a professional sales force. Wow. And we're, we have really quality salespeople in our sales force, people that have been in the industry for 30 years. Wow. And they're now working for me. And it's funny, they've been selling this stuff for a long time and they're coming into our environment and they're saying, we have never seen anything like this. They're saying, we've been selling for years the promise and never able to deliver. And this is the first time that we've ever gone out knowing that we could deliver what we're selling. Wow. That feels good as a salesperson to be able to know. <laughs> that you, That's, you've got to have, I mean, you can have confidence. Two to kill sales. One is being a bad salesperson. The other one is a salesperson doesn't believe in his product. Yeah. You know, and, and they believe in it for the first yeah. time. And, and so having them out there in the marketplace, telling the story and developing the processes in sales. I mean, the biggest thing that I did not know when I was, not, when I was a new entrepreneur was that just like the technology that is the core of your business, whether it be Microsoft technology or um, mach machining technology or training technology, the core of your business, that actually running a business is a technology too. And it can be learned. 
There is only so many ways to do accounting and knowing your numbers. There's only so many ways to get marketing working right. There's only so many ways to get salespeople doing right. And everybody's already done them. All you have to do is find one and adopt it, yeah. bolt it on, try not to adopt it too much, because, I mean, to, to modify it too much because it's already best practices. Try to adopt it and don't re reinvent the wheel. Just try to do it that way for six months or a year and see if it works and then modify it slightly to make it better and better and better for you optimizing it. It just makes things happen so much faster. That's great. That's great. Well, how, tell, tell us the, your, the services that Blue Gene uh, Networks offers and how people can get a hold of you. Sure. Blue Gene Networks is a, is a company that wants to be a fantastic company. And that's what we've been talking about now with caring, capable employees to provide the best IT there is. And, and, and so to do that, we provide an environment that where we grow up our people, where there, there's no question that my people have more certifications than any other company, probably in the North Texas. Wow. I mean, every one wow. of my guys certifies on a new technology every 90 days. My goodness. Yes. So they've con they're running out of certifications to get. They've, <laughs> they've gotten all the industry certifications. Then we are a company that goes into a small business and brings our standards. When other IT companies come into a business, what they do is they try to take your business over as it is and maintain it. And because they're doing that, one business is a triangle and another business is a circle and another business is a square and every network is different that they're maintaining. And so you have to get your, your favorite guy at the company who knows your network because if yeah. no one else knows your network, you're, you're dead in the water. The guy that you know is out that day. It's just as bad as being stuck with a single guy at your office that doesn't really know anything and he's out that day. They've got yeah. you by uh, the, uh, a very unfortunate part of your body and they're <laughs> holding you there. And, and, the point of that is, is that when we go in, we have built not one network that works good, but we've designed a network that will run any company good. Wow. And then we take that network and we take, and we apply those standards to every network that we bring into our environment to make them about 80% exactly the same as every other company in the world. Mm. I mean, it's all switches and printers and servers, but it's also the way we set them up and the settings and stuff like that. We set them up exactly the same way so that they're all circles. Yeah. And we're always looking at the same network. And then we document the heck out of that 20% that's unique to that company, their particular ERP or their particular uh, engineering machines or their particular testing th thing or their alarm system or their phone system, whatever's unique. And we document the heck out of that so that all of our engineers know where that documentation is and do it. And then when any of my engineers comes to your network, they can instantly tell whether it's right or wrong. Wow. They know what to do about that. And on top of that, any network that we find a problem in that, that is in that 80%, we can then replicate that to all the other networks before it becomes a problem in those networks so that every network is constantly becoming more and more stable and more and more reliable with the result being when a company typically comes in and starts working with us, they start out at about two and a half hours per endpoint. So if a company has 10 computers, we're doing about 25 hours per month of maintenance on them. And after we've worked with them for about six months, they're down to 0.3 hours per endpoint in maintenance. In other wow. words, that company Golly. is 500 to 1,000% less issues on their network so that they can actually get their work done. And I can pull up charts and graphs and show, show you in real time. We have yeah. the most amazing dashboards you've ever seen. But in real time, I can show you a company that's new, and a company that's been around with us for a while, and the graph is just right up, right down to nothing. They just get more and more stable. They get more and more reliable, and they love us more and more and more because of that. Yeah, along. that's huge. That's huge because so much of us just the whole you say IT and we just uh, you know, so that you guys have a system that you put in place, and and your people are all trained and and they know the system, and and they can come in and yeah, not having to have. Let me talk to Joe. He knows how to do it. No, let's not right. do that. And, so and, and, imagine that network in that really great company with caring, capable yeah. employees who provide the best IT there is. So my guys, we hire them all for their personality, all of them for their loving care. And these guys are on the phone and the people on the other side, they love them. 
Yeah. I mean, we, we know their names of their dogs. We figured out who their kids are. Uh, and, and we've just gotten to know them over the years to where we're just as much a part of their company as they are. That is great. That is so good. Well, I mean, I think if, if, some, if some small business owner uh, that, that is thinking about starting an IT company, I think he's going to listen to this interview or she's going to listen to this interview and just want to join your, your team. You know, That's what we after that. <laughs> so, um, well, let me ask you just a few rapid fire questions, kind of sure. make us all laugh. This is the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, I've got five or six of them here. Here we go. Um, if your five year old self suddenly found themselves inhabiting your current body, what would your five-year-old self do first? Lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, how'd you get so big? <laughs> That's great. Um, what would be the coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse? The coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse. I don't know, maybe a meerkat? A meerkat, ooh, that'd be pretty intense. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't hang out behind the little plexiglass at uh, oh, at the. No, they'd be like y'all on your business, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? Oh, gee. <laughs> Tried to explain business to the officer, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking too much again. They right? just wanted to shut him up. <laughs> there you go. Um, what is something that you just recently realized that you're embarrassed that you didn't realize it earlier? Just recently realized. Oh, I, I know. I'm drawing a blank on that one. My, anybody that knows me can tell me. I'm always right? going, oh, that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how you say that word. That's my problem. I'm like, oh, that's how you pronounce that. Uh, right. I'm more along the lines of, no, that, I don't think you pronounced that one right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the one saying that to me. And yeah, I'm like, oh. I'm that guy. <laughs> um, what's my the favorite mo thing when I was a kid was to read the Encyclopedia Britannica. Ooh. I would read that thing continuously. And it's, you know, it was nowhere near what the internet can give us today. But it's a kind of a broad spectrum of information you read that thing once or twice or three times and you know things that no adult knows well that's that's perfect for my next question which was what's the most ridiculous fact that you know ridiculous fact that i know this isn't ridiculous but this would blow a lot of people's minds do it it is estimated that either next year or the year after that fort worth will be the 12th largest city in the united states wow that but is only 20% of the jobs are in Fort Worth compared to 80% in Dallas. Huh? Okay. So we have some real marketing challenges and some real uh, communication around the United States because we're already bigger than Baltimore, Indianapolis, um, Boston. We're bigger than Boston and people don't know that. Yeah. They think of Fort Worth as kind of an appendage on Dallas. They come into the DFW and they, the, the lady always says, welcome to Dallas. Yep. And yep. Uh, I'm saying, no, this, this airport's half Fort Worth. Right? Yeah. Wow. That was a great, that was a great fact. I think that's a great fact to, uh, to end on here. Sonny, thank you so much for being on here. I'll have links to your website so people can find you, to your LinkedIn so people can find you. And it's just been a joy. I'm excited to hear the results of the, uh, the Entrepreneur Ooh. of Excellence Award. Apparently, and there's I'm, no I'm marketing for you. Because they've already made the decisions. But if it would help, vote for, Gene, for Blue Gene Networks. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much, Sonny. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Mm -hmm.